Hello Backyard Foundry friend! Today I am super super excited to bring you a video that shows how easy it can be to create something awesome from a little piece of styrofoam. This is a video that I reworked from uh, one of my favorite videos from the past. Let's get to it! Okay, I'm working on an iron cross casting today. Here is the pattern that I'm working from. Copy that onto a piece of paper. The middle part here is going to be raised. So what I did is I cut that piece out of my pattern and I glued it onto the foam. I'm going to route out around here and make it flat the whole way around here where the rest of the part is going to be so that that will be raised. I will go ahead and turn my router on and show you how that works. I actually casted these for a friend who wanted to mount these on his motorcycle. So there it is all routed out around there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper that I cut that out of and I'm going to Cut this out and I'm going to glue it down to the base there. Now that I have it glued onto the foam, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut out the areas that need to be recessed with an X-Acto knife. <laughs> pieces are cut out. Now I need to mount them on my sprue. I'm using a sprue that's thicker than the thickest part of the casting, but I don't want to have to cut out all that metal, so I'm making it narrow here. Doubling this, and then the casting will be fed through just that narrow piece, so I don't have to cut out as much on the casting when it's complete, because I don't like cutting through all that. So I'm going to glue it onto there, one on each side, then I'll put a pouring cup on the top of it. I'm going to put some drywall mud around it to hold the details, then we'll be ready to cast it. Okay, I think I'm going to put some feeds across here too to make sure that it, everything feeds. So let me go ahead and get those cut out and glued in also. Okay, I forgot to mention that I put masking tape around my sprue also. I don't know, I just think it helps keep the sand out. So I put little extensions across there to help feed it. Mixed up some 20 minute setting drywall compound, mixed it pretty well. And I made it, it's a little thinner than you would have it if you were using it for doing drywall. And I like to start by the cavities and push it into the cavities as well as I can. Okay, next, I'm gonna put a sprue cup on it. I decided that I'm going to need to put some vents in the sheetrock mud to allow the gases to escape and hopefully it'll feel better that way. I'm just going to use, I think there's a screwdriver bit, but anything I had handy to put some vents in here. Okay, next I'm going to put a screw cup on it. I'm gonna glue that on. I got this custom sprue cup at a local restaurant and it only cost me 99 cents, so I think that's a bargain. Okay, next thing we have to do is put this in the sand. I also put some masking tape across the top of my sprue cup to keep sand from getting in when I pour it into the around the pattern. So I put about an inch of sand in the bottom of the bucket, put my pattern on top of that. And now I'm going to use my custom sand scoop that I got at another local restaurant. I think I paid more than a dollar for this one though. We'll put some sand around the pattern. As you can see, this is dry sand. And I think I should have paid a little more for a better scoop. Oh well, I use what's at hand. Whatever works, get her done, right? When there's some undercut, you can go down and, and push the sand to try to make sure it gets fills in the undercut. And you can also tap on the sides to try to get the sand to fill. Yeah. I leave that masking tape on until right before I pour so that I can tear it off and go. Of course, if I get any sand in there, it's easy to blow out with it in a little air hose too. We're ready to mount some metal.
okay it's been a few hours since I poured this so we're gonna pull it out and see what it looks like it's still pretty hot so I'm using a wrench so far so good looks like it came out pretty well let me get a wire brush here is the casting wire brushed a little bit one side and there's the other one um, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. Next thing to do is cut the sprue off and smooth them out a little bit and then sandblast them and paint the areas that'll be back black like the uh, areas here will be black and the uh, depressions here will be black and then we'll, we'll uh, buff off the areas that are going to be bright and silver again. Okay, here I'm ready to sandblast in my portable sandblast. Okay, so there they are all sandblasted. Okay, the next step is to spray paint the recessed areas and the sides black. Okay, now I'm going to use a sander to buff off or highlight the uh, edges that need to be silver top of there and just the edges here. So here's one of them that is all done, sanded off. Now I'm going to put some shellac on the black areas and it'll bring out the black colors again. It sort of dissolves, this shellac sort of dissolves the paint. I'm going to have to touch up the silver again. Just about. Almost, I'm almost done. 